You see? Mm. You see what I'm saying? You yeah. choose the right track. People say, they tap their toes and say, I'll buy that as a new artist that I'll get behind. You played the wrong track, i.e. the one you chose. But that was the first say, single. What's that overrated nonsense? <laughs> it's like the streets, you know? Coming up from the streets, mm. in the beats. Yeah. Good, good the cheats. Eat. <laughs> Stephen Merchant is with us, <laughs> and uh, you know, sitting down, you wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> you would not know. Yep. And that has probably been, I would have thought, a saving grace for you over Absolutely. the years, many times in class, in school, yep. on long journeys yep. and so on. Yeah. I'm, I'm devastated that you had stuff sent to me from my relatives. That's Uncle Richard has I risen to your defence. You, you don't get that. When David Bowie comes on or, you know, some of your big-name guests, Paul Young or whoever, he doesn't get stuff sent in, does he? Paul Young? <laughs> <laughs> Just go back to the big-name guests. <laughs> right, yeah. No, Paul was lovely. No, but you know why? Because they're used to it, you see, I suppose. Yeah. Because they're used to being in the public eye. They're used to people saying things, casual remarks, off-the-cuff remarks, not, not seriously meant to mm. wound. Mm. Well, I'm embarrassed because I know I'm not in the public eye. I'm so worried now people are thinking that I think I'm a celebrity or that, you know, I'm not, like you said, I'm not in the show. I'm one of the backroom boys. There's no reason to be here, really. You're the backroom boy. Yeah, exactly. Because there aren't that many others. That's not a euphemism. <laughs> that's. <laughs> you see, now you're getting worried, aren't you? See, yeah, well, I'm panicked now. Because I pick up on you every word. I'll be honest, Jonathan, I came on in an effort to boost my celebrity status <laughs> and maybe to sort of exploit that, you know, in my constant pursuit for women or fame or money. And you've embarrassed me, you've made me look like some kind of, you know... Well, not me so much as your relatives, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, I didn't but like I've been running enough. away from them, Jonathan, for so long, you know. I moved Are you to London close with I got away with it. When was the last time you saw Uncle Richard? I haven't seen him for a long time, long time. Many you years. obviously figure yeah. largely in his, well, his thoughts, so it's yeah. nice. He's probably listening in right now. Yeah. You might want to give him what we call a big shout-out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did he send any money? Um, like you, maybe, but that never gets to me. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, Uncle Richard, is there an auntie involved here as well? Let's not go down there. I just wondered whether he was a single fella, whether he was an uncle in the of non-relative sense. No, no, you know, no, like no, a no, kindly no, loner no. who lived nearby, <laughs> who your parents had allowed to call himself an uncle. Sure. Hence yeah. him taking an undue interest in your career and writing in two yeah. radio shows. Yeah. You yeah. know? No, there's nothing untoward. Like Uncle Barrymore used to be the same <laughs> kids, you know what I mean? <laughs> Let's move on. Mm. Um, mm. So, Stephen, congratulations. The Office is, without doubt, I think, one of these shows on television. You've watched it. Have you actually seen it? You haven't. Of course I You haven't. Because I, I have heard you talking with Ricky saying that um, you would maybe fell asleep during one of the new episodes. When I went to see the two new episodes, I, I, I had a nice snooze during the second one. Right. OK, but, but okay. in my defence, I had just come back that morning from my holiday in America and I right. was slightly jet lagged. OK. You know, and so, you know, but, and, and it wasn't very good. <laughs> sure, OK. OK, so those, all those factors yeah. combined, dovetailed. Yes. And then it resulted in a lovely nap. Yeah, good, oh. really good. But it's a great show, it really is. And uh, uh, what's his name, David Brent? David Brent, yeah. Now, what do you make of it, because obviously you're a reviewer and everything, you're a critic, what do you make of it, sort of, because obviously I'm involved with the writing and the direction, mm -hmm. what do you make of it, you know, being a kind of expert on such matters? I, well, I'm not an expert. Does it look shoddy? I think, no, I think the style suits the material perfectly. Right. It, no, it's very well, it's brilliantly directed yeah. and it's very well written. Yeah. And, but I'm curious as to how you write it because it seems so freewheeling and it seems so naturalistic. I wonder how much of a script you stick to and how much of that is improvised, ad-libbed, whether you have long rehearsal sessions and then hone that down. How do you, how do you come up with the script for the office? Well, a lot of the writing is done um, just kind of, we, we'll sort of say, well, wouldn't it be funny if David Brent, you know, took a training day or wouldn't it be funny if David Brent, you know, got his guitar out? And then Ricky and I will kind of improvise you know, around that theme, based on our experience of offices and whatever else. And obviously, because Ricky's in the show, it makes it easier for us, you know, and he can perform that, and, and we'll yeah. they'll get a little spark, and off we go, really. And um, and then we sort of put that in a dictaphone, and we type that up slowly, and obviously the actors are so good that they can kind of play with what we've written. And But there's not a lot of improvisation. We, we take most of the credit. You say that you've worked in offices. Which, which jobs had you had before, and which offices had Ricky worked in? Uh, well, I've, I did stuff, you know, like those... I mean, obviously, no, you don't, because you've, you've been on the telly now for many years. And I was what, born. I, I, I was given a show the day I was born. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I did a lot of the, what they call, you know, call centre jobs, you know, where you've got to sit there with... Uh, with thousands of other people, it seems, in those huge kind of empty offices, just sat on the phone. And I was, um, I was, I think, giving away catalogues for oddly shaped women. If you want to buy clothes, <laughs> if you're an oddly shaped woman and you wanted to buy clothes, and I could imagine these women phoning up, you know, with these kind of huge sort of balloon. But, legs. Uh, but I'm assuming that they, it wasn't termed that. It wasn't a hello, oddly shaped women <laughs> exactly. catalogue. Presumably, yeah. there was a nice way of talking about it when when you were talking to the odd shaped people. Exactly. Yeah, you'd, you'd refer to them as kind of you know differently shaped, different, or, or whatever it might be, <laughs> physically and, altered. Um, and that was very, but you're also juggling because obviously a lot of people don't realise that with those call centres you're juggling a couple of different things. So you've got the odd the odd women phoning up. You've also got people changing their postcode 
or having their postcode changed phoning up. So, you know, you're juggling between these three different... It's a very skilled job. There's quite a lot of pressure there. Absolutely. Yeah. And at any stage, did you just shout out, You're freaks! <laughs> did, did well, you crack? Well, because it, it's unbearable. I did a week's training, and then I quit a week later. It's just the most incredible... It's, it's stressful. But the guy that trained me was, was, in many ways, like the sort of characters we put in the office. He was a... He was giving us all the training, and he was trying to be really enthusiastic. You know, welcome, have a smile in your voice. Well, dress smartly when you come in, you know, like you do, obviously, today, you know, to, the to give you that kind of energy. And it was dress smartly, sit up right. And he would give us all this kind of, this sort of talk. And I said to him, is this what you always want to do then? You know, training people to answer phones for, for oddly shaped ladies? And he said, uh, well, I, 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 you know, I tried acting for a while. And I said, <laughs> oh, I was, no. it felt so tragic. And I said, oh, right, you don't, you don't miss the acting. And he said, this is an acting, in a way. This is a sort of acting. Uh. And I just, it just felt devastated. And that was what we tried to capture in the office, you know, is those people with the sort of... There is, well, that's the one thing about the office. In their lives. It's funny, but there is a deep poignancy. Exactly, uh, exactly. Lurking beneath the surface. Mm. And uh, I love the way in the second series, which, it, does it start this week? I it think it starts Monday, yeah. OK, so it yeah. starts Monday night on BBC Two. Yeah. Do you know what time it goes out? I imagine you know? it's, it's 10 o'clock or something. something uh, like it's that. somewhere around there, I guess. Um, <laughs> the, the great thing is the way the characters have all moved on in the second series. You know, there mm. is, you followed on that kind of narrative arc from the first yes. series, and now we have, we're, we're rejoining them just after the... Yeah, the, it's only about a couple of weeks later. So yeah, the merging the of the two branches, of exactly. Swindon and Slough, I believe. Yes, yes. Um, David Brent, though, is was there a David Brent, or are there a number of people who inspired Ricky's Not character? really. I mean, he always describes it as a sort of Frankenstein character, and uh, I think he's just, you know, put a lot of the kind of, you know, um, all these different people that wound him up or annoyed him, and that can be anyone from, you know, people serving you in shops or restaurants to teachers or whatever else, and he's kind of moulded them all together. And that sort of, that character kind of came to him pretty fully formed, you know. You know, I mean, because he was an old man by the time he came up with it, Jonathan, as you know, he was in well, his Well, that's the thing, it's an incredible achievement. Mm. No, I really mean this, because I, I think for the people watching TV now who are, you know, maybe not as aware of comedy beforehand, for them, this will be for them what, say, Basil Forty was to people, say, well, 15, 20 years ago. Flattering. That's what Brent will be. And it's even more remarkable when you consider it was invented by an over-tall freak and a fat bloke. <laughs> well, yeah. And that is what really strikes me as being, you know, I'm saying this sure. nicely, it's incredible. When you say freak, Jonathan, I mean, do you want to qualify that? Differently heighted. Slight, right, yeah, because yeah. obviously, as I said before, looking. Looking to sort of, you know. But gigantism is, I think, <laughs> something to be proud of. Six foot seven. Oh, six foot seven. That's it's not, not big. Then. big. Are you wearing, not but big. you're wearing stacks. No, I don't. I, you know, don't think. <laughs> you I'm come in here in the, your platform shoes. I'm sick of the high. It seems to me that the weird thing is we, we mentioned this in the new series. I do appear very briefly as an incredibly tall freak, oh. and um, we make the jokes because I get the same jokes all the time. I get the what's the weather like up there? Oh yeah. Um, do you did your parents put you in a grow bag when you were a child? <laughs> See, I, that, I'd like that one. That's there's some what, thoughts gone into what, that. Now you might be able to tell me this, being kind of a man of, of shorter stature. Every, I meet, meet people from different walks of life that don't know each other. I meet mm. older people, younger people, and they will always use those same gags. Is there some kind of conspiracy There's with, a... like, people of normal height? You get all taken into a room at some point and told <clears> to, <throat> to make those cracks if you see a tall person? There's a normal club we go to, right. and they <laughs> give us brochures and say, if sure. you see one of these uh -huh. types, mm -hmm. OK, don't fear them. Yeah. Attack them with the joke. <laughs> yeah. okay. And here are the three you're allowed to do to the tall ones. <laughs> yes. That's all yeah. it is. Don't take you personally. Yeah. You're yeah. not that tall, really, are you? No, but I do get the same things. You know, I'll have people, a, a drunk guy in a pub and he'll just say, I'll order drinks. That's a tall order. Crack it, you know, weep with laughter and fall <laughs> off his he, chair. He's got a funny life. <laughs> well, I'll have people in, like, white vans. I've had people driving by in white vans and go, Yo, you lanky, hey! How tall are you? And you just think, oh, what, I'm going to cross the road to talk to you? I, do you play basketball? <laughs> you see, that's that. You see, if that was colour based, play, that would be illegal. This is what I'm saying. Or even if I was really fat, I don't think people would tolerate that. You don't get yeah. people saying, you know, where do you buy your clothes? Well, or... sometimes I do. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Depends who I'm interviewing. <laughs> yeah. um, what are we going to play? Because you guys, of course, uh, Stephen, as you, you may well be aware, you will be aware, I'm sure, if you're in the London area, but you might not be outside. Stephen, with Ricky Gervais, they have a hit radio show, which <laughs> is on after this one. Yes. But on, it's a, like a sort of, like a vanity like a channel. Station, yeah, yeah, like a yeah. pirate station. Exactly, all, as good as. Yeah. And so it hasn't got a lot of listeners, but it's, yeah. I, I'm one of them. Oh, well, I'll, I'll listen in. It's very, very good. What sort of music do you like? You like the rap, don't you, in the early hip-hop? Well, I, I, I do, but I, I, you know, you can't look like me and, and like hip-hop, really. I'd like to see you breakdancing. Yeah, no, I, I, got, I, got, I got the moves, Jonathan. I don't think that. I'm, I can bust the moves. But I, no, I kind of, I've recently been getting back into the old school stuff, you know, like the Neil Youngs and the, and the Dylans. and Because oh. obviously, you know, I'm quite a young uh, sort of lad. Youngish. So they've passed me by for a time. So it's amazing. I'm discovering all these amazing albums. That's the great thing. What, what, should, what are we going to play now? We're going to play The Animals. What, does that, is that, Brilliant. Does Fantastic. that work? See? That works. Yeah. Okay, that's great. That's The Animals. Mm. Um, we've got Stephen Merchant here with us. He co writes and co directs the BAFTA winning BBC Two sitcom The Office. Did you go, when, when the show won a BAFTA, did you go along and collect it with? Ricky? We did indeed, but we, um, wow. because our producer is in a wheelchair, they decided we couldn't come up from the stage 
because that would take too long. Apparently, they, they didn't have ramps or they didn't have the money for ramps and so on. Oh, so we all had to ply. We went to pile backstage in the darkness with all the other nominees. We had Paul Whitehouse there and the guys from Space. And so they're all back there in the darkness. There's no sandwiches. There's no food. And we're staggering around in the dark. And we see kind of vaguely a couple of Hollywood big shots. You know, like who a bunch of celebrity awards. refugees. It seekers. really was. And so all the glamour was sucked out the evening. And it's, I don't know if you've been to the. I mean, obviously you have because you've hosted them and whatever else. But they're just interminable, aren't they? They're just the most. I, I do find them. You know, but you see, I've never won. Like that. I've have never won any, I've never won a BAFTA. Have you? You've never I, won even, I don't think I've even been nominated for a BAFTA. And I, I suspect to, I never will be. I went to one award ceremony that was not televised. That um, everything was because I, I, I know you do a lot of corporates and stuff. I'm I, well, not, not so many there. anymore. Right, but do, is this a <laughs> usual thing? All the all the um, the awards were sponsored by industry. And including including everything, all the food was sponsored. I had a pudding sponsored by Electrolux. No, you see, I don't <laughs> believe, I've never had a I don't food, believe that. I think you've invented that. I swear to God, every single no, thing. You see, he's put a spin on that, which I admire. <laughs> I haven't. But that's not the truth, Stephen. Well, it is the truth, and now I... No, now no, you've, now you've you're a giant of, and a liar. But you've accused me of being a liar, and now everyone thinks I'm trying to make some kind of wacky well, humour Well, that's what you're doing there. That's fine. Otherwise, dull life. It's OK. OK. But, you know, I do find the award shows do drag on a little bit, but I'd like to have seen you pick up there, because I'm sure the speech that was made was funny. Uh, I think when the uh, when the BAFTA one was televised, they cut that one out. They what? cut us out because uh, they said uh, other winners this evening included The Office. Anyway, yeah. adverts and and so my parents and Uncle Richard, no doubt, were all sat around looking forward to it. Uncle Didn't Richard, get to see it. it was devastating. He had, a, he had his finger on the record <laughs> exactly. button. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> little Steve, well, not Little Stephen, but Stephen's going to get up <laughs> yeah. there and get that. Yeah. But of course, also when we did the comedy awards, that you, I, my head was cut off because obviously I don't feature in a regular <laughs> TV frame, yeah. being so tall. So. The ratio. Yeah. You so don't I fit was, the ratio. Yeah. All you could see was my my handsome torso. You're special. Well, thanks very much. <laughs> That's what it is. You're Thank special. You. Don't touch me, Jonathan. <laughs> um, the Office, the second series, starts on Monday night on BBC Two. Um, will there be a third series? I mean, are we working towards that now? Or when well, I say we, I mean you. There's obviously. some cliffhanger moments at the end of this series, right. so we leave it open. Hopefully, the BBC will will sort of force us to do it, and, and we can kind of charge obscene amounts of money. But I'm amazed that uh, once again, I go back to just how good it is. Thank you very and much. I, I don't mean that in a weird way, but it just it just seems to me that you guys get the casting so right, you right. get the script so right. It's so well directed, and it's very rare that a new series hits the ground running that smoothly. Well, we spent a lot of time casting because uh, we read some quote that Stanley Kubrick said, you know, casting is like 90% of a director's job or something. And so we spent like six months casting, getting all the right people. And then you just leave them, you can just, you know, wind them up and let them go, really. They are, it's a great cast you have there. Let's talk a bit more about them after the news, if Brilliant. we may. Uh, we're going to go to that now. We'll be back with Stephen Merchant, 88 to 91 FM. This is Radio 2 from the BBC. Well, that's lovely. Mm. We're here with Stephen Merchant. He, uh, as I said, he co writes and co directs the BAFTA award winning. Office. That must be great to hear that. It's a mm. BAFTA award winning show. Yeah, that Cause, is Because nice. it does still count for something, that award. I mean, I know the comedy yeah, awards are nice, but it's a kind of uh, pat on the back from your peers, whereas that's kind of dull people vote for BAFTAs. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, but we well, the best thing them. now is that we get to see free films and stuff for a at, year. At the BAFTA? just genius, yeah. Wow. I'm so excited about and it. And popcorn? Because I'm just basically in this industry for free stuff, <laughs> or free Electrolux sponsored desserts. Or was, it a, w- was there an Electrolux theme to the dessert then? <laughs> was it shaped like a hoover well, it, or something? It was some kind of, I don't know what the dessert was, but it had an Electrolux logo. Mm. Kind of mint on top. That's nice. Which was nice touch. That's a yeah. nice touch. I took that away and took that back and showed the family. You know what? We we're all doing well. <laughs> we could sponsor a dessert. That would be nice. Yeah, we could just sponsor. Did that would be quite nice. What would you be? Some kind of souffle? Some kind of flamboyant souffle? No, I don't know. I'd like to think I'd be a cheesecake. Yeah. Possibly. A cheesecake. <laughs> yeah, with a with a nutty praline base. Nice. Do you yeah. say praline or praline? I don't. I rarely say the word. I, <laughs> I get the feeling this isn't a moment of the show that's going to be uh, this submitted is not to the. Radio. This to is the, not going to make it to, to the, the Sony's. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so the, the series is back now, and I, I'm amazed at the amount of press you guys have got for it as well. Mm. I mean, you can't open a magazine this week without seeing. Richard's Are people face. sick of it? Do you think Are people? Sick no, of it? no. But I mean, I, because I think the show's so good, it doesn't matter. But Correct. but certainly, I've never seen such. Bla- it's like blanket bombing going on. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know, ev- even minor characters who appear to have just two lines <laughs> yes. in the show have been given several pages yes. in in the newspapers. Yeah. yeah. It's a. It, it's seems to be a phenomenal... A, a people are bound to be disappointed, because I'm sure there'll be lots of new people who are going to tune in, you know, what's all this I've read about, and they're bound to be disappointed. Have they not repeated the first series to kind of shore it up? Not really, no, ready? no, not since, uh, since a while ago. Right. So, who knows? You know, it could be the tricky second album. You well, know. it's a good, it's a solid thing, there's no doubt so. about that. When do you start working on the third one, then? When will you start working I on don't it? know whether we will. I think we, it might be nice to sort of uh, to take a break for a while and think of other projects. And what would they be? Well, Ricky's obviously very excited about making a, a show um, where he plays a hard-bitten cop, yeah. you know, who's got a wayward daughter. She's she's turning a bit crazy, and uh, he's he got to take his shirt off a lot. He's a boxer as well. Could he have a <laughs> tall assistant? He could maybe have a tall assistant, yeah, kind of tall, good-looking, good, freakish assistant, and he mm. gets into scrapes. So you know, the, the, he's a maverick, but he gets 
results, Jonathan. A maverick who doesn't go by the book. He doesn't go by the book. Trusts only his gut instinct. Exactly. And you somehow the DA is on his back constantly. Yeah. Well, I think that's a great. And uh, it's set in the future. A DA over here just means a teddy boy haircut. That <laughs> yeah. So they're going to comb his hair on <laughs> yes. the back. I suspect Ricky is quite a hairy fella, isn't he? Well, the thing about Ricky is that he's he's you know he can laugh at himself on TV and he's you know he's quite a, a, a fat man and a funny man, but uh, he takes he's he, he'll he, like for instance recently he was going to take up boxing. He suddenly decided that because you know it's secretly in another life he kind of thinks he could have been a champion boxer. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I think that hits time. all men when they go past forty. They but it's think, like you with your bass guitar. Again. It's me with my bass guitar. Well, it's me with everything I do in my spare sure. time. Frankly, you yeah, think that yeah. you could have been if you'd have just got onto this when you were like twenty five, you probably yeah. could have been seeded like number three. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, but seriously, you believe that, don't you? Yeah. So Ricky thinks he had a boxing chance. Well, he thinks that because apparently there's something called white collar boxing where you can. Is this right? It's kind of like like a kind of more civilized fight club. It's city people, exactly. Do, yeah. So he's the idea. Like I was saying to him, you just want to beat up a businessman. Then. Is this your, this is your I think he'd be more like a weeble. Do you remember the weebles? Exactly. Yeah. You, you knock them and they don't fall weebles down. wobble, but they don't they fall down. down. Yeah. I think that's pretty much what he's like. A lot of his mannerisms, though, Ricky, even when he's not, are similar to David Brent. Do you think so? Well, the way he fiddles with his tie. Well, you know, people say now that that's a kind of that's a lovely little observation, but that's... that was just because he wasn't used to wearing a tie. He got on his nerves. <laughs> so I would constantly say, "Stop fiddling with your tie." Like it's a... really annoying. So he's like an alley cat or a dog with a new collar. <laughs> exactly. He's exactly scratching what it. it is. He's yeah. never got used to it. But I don't because I, I know you know Ricky regularly, but he's he probably is very charming when you meet him. But he's one of the most annoying men you can ever meet. I mean, really, he's an absolute nightmare. In which way does that manifest itself? Oh, in every way. I mean, he's like a he's like a child who you know those children who um, kind of beat up their brother whenever they've had some kiora. They they react to the uh, the e numbers or the yeah. And so they're kind of wild, they're out of control, yeah. they're just throwing things around, they're smashing up their PlayStation. <laughs> and he's like that constantly. But but like we um, we did a show up in Edinburgh at the Edinburgh Festival and we had to share accommodation. Yeah. And I don't know how his girlfriend of, of 19 years puts up with him because he's unbearable. He's one of those people who will sort of, he'll say, um, entertain me, entertain me, you know, and he'll he'll run around and he'll play with things. But you know what? But as soon as he wants to go to sleep, we've all got to be quiet. And she, I have met her, <laughs> she could do so much better. She for could, I've, do you know, she's I constantly lovely, say this. she's incredibly talented. I say, why did you settle with Gervais? Produces I'm it shows herself. She's a, a beautiful woman, and yet she's basically. And for many years, she's stayed by this guy. And I I, I'm devastated by it. I just, I, I just, I never, I can't believe how after ten years she looked at him and thought, "Yeah, I'll stick with you." Well, but you know, but of course, I saw him on Room One Hundred One, and back when they first met, he was, he was yeah, a very thin guy. Yeah, he, sure. he looked like all gone. He looked like Pete Murphy from Bauhaus. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, let that be the yardstick from now on for good-looking men. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It, does he look a bit Pete Murphy? Oh, yeah, well, he's good-looking. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you must enjoy working together. Absolutely, yeah. No, that's the good thing, is that he's, his childlike ways, um, once you get used to them, you know, they're a wonderful pleasure and a joy. <laughs> like working with a child who has some But problems. he's, I mean, he's a nightmare on set because he just runs around, he screeches, he, he kind of tries to annoy the cast, the crew. I mean, he, one take took 75 takes. It should take maybe five takes. It took 75 takes because he was just trying to wind the other actor up. Yeah. He was just trying to put him off. And, Un and unprofessional. It was deeply unprofessional. Unprofessional and selfish. Yeah, and then he just starts, you know, and then, he, and then suddenly he goes, I've got a headache, I've got a, you know, got a headache, bring me a cheese sandwich. Yeah. And um, and it's, oh, it's a nightmare. demanding yeah. nightmare. Oh, absolutely awful. Yeah. Terrible, well, let's terrible. hope that you go on to better things and people will find that's out about it. And he'll be it. on a, a little desert island with Barrymore. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> before we move on from the office, one thing: Ash, who produces the show, mm. uh, I've seen him at award shows. I've met him a few times. Seems like a lovely fella. He's in a wheelchair. Now, what, what, why is he in the wheelchair? What is it that uh, was it polio? Oh, or something? Just lazy. No, no, no. Because <laughs> I, I've got the feeling that it, it is for attention. Well, possibly so. Yes. <laughs> because he's. What does he claim it is? He, I think he claims it's polio. Yeah. I have seen him walking and dancing. Really? <laughs> I think he's got in that wheelchair so that when you go and get award shows, you guys get the you get a little extra kind of like. Of course. Yeah, yeah, says, yeah. Isn't that great? Look at how they did well. Yeah, how wonderful! Because well. they made the show and they're incredibly open-minded folks. And they've yeah. got. A, I've seen him after the after show party. Once he forgot himself, he got up. He was moonwalking. <laughs> really grooving. So I'm I'm blowing the whistle on you. <laughs> sure. <okay>. Officially. <laughs> Let's hear no more of it. Well, it turns out I'm not a freakish kind of giant, and neither is Ricky a foul man. But give another couple of series, and the way Ricky's eating, he'll need a wheelchair. <laughs> Let's have a bit more music. The bees. The bees. The bees. I like the bees. Yeah. Um, you you play a lot of popular music, don't you? On I'm sure. Yes, yes. What kind of new British bands do you like? I, do you know, I think it's in quite a desperate state now. Actually. No, not, really? I'm, yeah, I, people were yeah. raving about that band, The Coral, but I listened to it. It sounded like the In Spiral Carpets. Do you remember that? I used to love In Spiral well, Carpets. no, though. but you don't want to listen to a whole album of that kind of organ music, that organ indie music. I love organ music. <laughs> I like Radio 2, The Organist Entertained. Sure. I settle down for that. We get the kids in bed early so we can fully enjoy it. I put on my yeah. smoking jacket. Out, out of the radiogram comes the sound of an organist who spent many years honing his skills. Yes, yes. And when those pipes are clean, I tell you, there's no experience quite like it. <laughs> you see, you youngsters... We don't appreciate it. With your parkers. Of course, yeah, and, and your skateboards. And your scooters. <laughs> going down
<laughs> that's probably the, the the sort of the smallest response we've yeah, ever had. Yeah, yeah. You're not David Essex. Not no. even from it's not even from an uncle. <laughs> Deary me. Jonathan, being very tall myself, this fellow's six foot six, this is Robert, by the way, Robert Rods, Robson, I too have to hear all the uh, tired old cliches shouted from the other side of the street or pub. It's mainly men, but occasionally a woman joins in with, are you all in proportion? Yes. Have you ever had that? Yes. And yes. what do you say? I don't that? answer it. It's my business. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's that's for me and that cut. lady to find <laughs> that's out. That's very terse. <laughs> yes. Well, oh, that's not what yes. I was hoping for. No, well, I'm not going to get, you know, this is a family show, Jonathan. And when a woman shouts at you, do you think they're shouting it just to be, just to break the ice? To be, really? to be blue, I think, to or be lewd. Do you think it is to be yeah. lewd? Maybe it's a chat line. Maybe I didn't spot the sign. <laughs> See, that's what I'm <laughs> yeah. wondering. I, get, <laughs> I couldn't read the sign. I, I get the feeling you're the kind of person who doesn't always know. I don't think you're aware of just how attractive you are. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> I didn't come here to be insulted. That's I'm not insulting the tenant. Is that not a nice thing? With laughter. Because he, that's what he does, that's his job. Yeah, I just what I do, that's what I paid for. Right. I have a little button here near my foot, and when I press it, he cackles. <laughs> yeah, a little spike he's, digs me in the leg. And he's I go, wired up for cackling. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but, uh, but do you have a lot of people come on to you now? I mean, as a result of the success I of the show? I thought there'd be a lot more, Jonathan. I'm, de I'm devastated, actually. I thought there'd be a lot more kind of showbiz parties. And again, I think it's because I'm not on screen. I don't no. feature on screen. And I think it doesn't, you can pass unnoticed. It's devastating. But you do appear in this series. I do very briefly, yes, as a kind of as so a freak. You, you might want to consider, <laughs> you, know, you know, getting some candles. Get some candles in at home. Sure. <laughs> Maybe a new duvet. Yeah. yeah. So if luck does come knocking, yes. you've got the, you know, it's the right atmosphere. Sure, I understand. You yeah. know, because otherwise when you take someone back, if it's very bed city, that's no good. Yeah, yeah. You know, trust me, I'm a celebrity. If they come back <laughs> to your house, they expect some glamour. Right. You know what I, I recommend you get? Go on. Patchouli oil. Patchouli oil? I once read I an with interview that? with Simon Le Bon. OK. It was only the ones. <laughs> yes. I read one, I've never made that mistake again. <laughs> and the only uh, item of interest I could glean from this was when he's on tour, mm -hmm. to make his hotel rooms more like a home, a bit yeah. of a love nest, he'll drape exotic scarves over the lamps. Right. And burn some patchouli oil incense. Is that how he wowed uh, Yasmin? I think so. And what is patchouli oil? What does that smell like? I don't know. You've no idea? I thought it was what those rockers, bike rockers have. It's horrible. I've no idea. How did you wear your uh, your lady wife? Patchouli oil. Was it patchouli oil? Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> A lot of scarves. I sent Simon Le Bon in to do it for me. <laughs> Simon Le Bon. Oh, bless you. There's a cautionary tale. <laughs> Absolutely. Stephen, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Um, I, obviously, we, we wanted Ricky. Of course. But we were very happy to have you. Well, you're not going to get him up this early, I wouldn't no, have exactly. anymore. He's a big shot. He's won awards. Yeah, well, he's on Parkinson tonight. He is indeed. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, there was a party. trailer for it read out on BBC last night where um, Ricky looked very awkward because mm. Parky had his arm around him. You know, Parky <laughs> now does those trailers. Uh, I guess it's to kind of, you know, obviously we all do trailers to boost the ratings. And he does that thing where he appears to be like a. He's done the interview, and I'm sure it's a very good interview, but at the end of it, he looks like a jocular uncle. Yes. With his arm <laughs> and, and Ricky looked like a rather reluctant pruant who'd been caught <laughs> and was forced to stand in front of the school assembly. Yes. And at the end, Parkinson did this kind of fairly straightforward, this is who's on the show tonight, but then he did an odd showbiz flourish with his hand <laughs> that came down and it, and it was just... <clears throat> a bit embarrassing. Have you been a guest on Parkinson then? No. Do, do, do a chat show, you know, because he's, he's a big rival, is he, of yours? He won't have me on. Sure. He won't have me on. It's yeah. because it goes back a long way. It's something it? between me and Mary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we... We don't like to talk about it, no. but apparently my name's cried out occasionally. <laughs> okay. At the wrong time. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Take Thank care. You.